So now that the kombucha has been sitting for 10 to 12 days, I can show you how to do the second ferment, which entails flavoring it, bottling it, and uh, refrigerating it. So when we make our, our second ferment for the kombucha, we also set up our kombucha for the next ferment in order to keep our scoby going. So I have prepared here the tea for the next one. And I prepared this one a little bit differently. I cold brewed it, which I like a lot better. It's a lot more organic way to make the tea. It, essentially, all you need to do is put tea bags in pure water for tw at least 12 hours. I put mine in the day before, and studies have shown that it has the same amount of, of antioxidants as warm brewing, but it also has less caffeine, at least half the amount of caffeine. It is less acidic, and it has less tannins in it, so you won't have that bitter taste as well. The only thing is when you cold brew, all the sugar doesn't dissolve. So I take the sugar that didn't dissolve at the bottom of the bowl, put it in warm water, and dissolve it by stirring. You don't have to boil the water though. So I highly recommend cold brewing it, and then you don't have to worry about uh, lowering the temperature of the warm brew either. Now, when you take your cloth off for your kombucha, you're gonna notice that there is another scoby in there. That's called the baby scoby, and that's gonna be the one that we use for our next batch of kombucha. The mother is either attached to it and then when you need to separate them or it's underneath it here. So if you need a SCOBY to start, I'm going to have links at theartofunity.com on where to get one of those, have them sent to you. Now what we're going to do is take out the new SCOBY, which is the baby, and that's going to become our new mother. That's going to be what we make the new batch of kombucha with. So remember, it's, it's rough side down and the tea is the same as the last recipe. For one gallon, we have eight tea bags and one cup of organic pure cane sugar. And also you're gonna take a cup or two of starter tea from the old batch and put it in the new batch. You're also gonna see these little yeast bits in there and those are okay to eat too. They're essentially good probiotics or bacteria for you. If you don't like them, you can just pull those out. Now what we're gonna do with our old school bean, which was our old mother, is we're going to put it in a jar and put it in the refrigerator. This is called the SCOBY Hotel. And the reason why is because this is our backup plan. God forbid we lose our SCOBY from uh, fruit flies or mold or something like that. We have, uh, we have some backup ones. And I recommend saving about five of these. After that, you can start giving them out to other people and you can uh, eat these, you can cook it, whatever you like to do. Recipes for like typical mushrooms. Now, when you reach in to get the scope, you want to have really clean hands because remember, we don't want to add any bacteria to this. We also don't want to have soap on our hands because that will, that will kill some of the bacteria that's in there as well. Now, this is where the second fermentation starts. What we're going to do is take this kombucha that has been fermenting for 10 days and we're going to put it in these airtight containers. So you'll see here, this will make it seal. Now, it's still say no metal, no plastic. From here, you have four options for flavoring. If you just want to make regular kombucha, all you need to do is take this and put it in a bottle and put it in the refrigerator. If you want that carbonated, just put it in one of these airtight bottles, close it up, let it sit out for a few days, three to five days, and then put it in the refrigerator and drink it cold. If you prefer to flavor it, this is where your fun and creativity comes in because you could put almost any type of food that you want in there, any fruits. You could put kiwi, pomegranate, red or white grapes, mango, blueberries, strawberries, rhubarb. As far as herbs, you could also put whatever herbs you want in there. Turmeric, mint, rosemary, basil. I've tried all these and they taste great. You could even put more sugar in it. You could put some raisins, honey, maple syrup, or any other sweetener or frozen fruit that you like. For this batch, the first one I made is with pear and ginger. and pomegranate in another, and pomegranate and blueberry in the third one. If you use pomegranate, the best way to get the seeds out is by cutting it into quarters and letting it sit in pure water for 15 minutes or longer. Now, how much fruit to use is up to you. You need very little, I mean, you could go by a gauge of maybe a teaspoon per eight ounces. But that's up to you, it depends on how strong you like it. 
All you really need is the sugar. So you could actually use store-bought juice, commercial juice as well. I don't like to do that because it doesn't have any enzymes in it and it's essentially, it's no probiotics either, but uh, it's more of a predictable medium. So with these, depending on, on how carbonated you want it, you really only need to leave them out two or three days. And at first, you're gonna to need to burp them. You don't normally have to burp them because you want that carbonation to build up. But the reason you're gonna burp them at first is because you're gonna gauge it how much the carbonation is forming where you live. Because it depends on the temperature where you keep these as well. The higher the temperature, the quicker they're gonna ferment and the more carbonation there's gonna be. The lower the temperature, like if it's in winter, you'll notice it might take an extra day to make the same uh, amount of carbonation. So it's between two or three days with fruit, with commercial juices, if you're gonna use that, you'd, same thing, like a, maybe a teaspoon or a tablespoon per eight ounces, and you can leave that out for a couple more days, maybe three to five days, depending on uh, where you're at before you refrigerate them. Now, you can use mason jars as well. I don't like to use the mason jars so much because the mason jars, even though they create a seal at first, when there's carbonation inside, they push out the top of the metal jar and allow for gas to get out as well as some of the kombucha. Now you're gonna to wanna to fill up the jars as much as possible to get the maximum amount of carbonation. If you don't, then what's gonna happen is there's gonna be a lot of room for the, uh, the carbonation to be inside the jar without it being into the drink. So if that happens, so for example, if you run out of kombucha to put in a jar like this and it's only halfway, what you can do is let it sit in the flavoring for a couple days, then put it in a glass bottle like this one, and then close that up and let it seal, leave it out for a couple more, day, more days where it's close to the top, and then you'll, you'll have the carbonation come into it that way. You can, after you do this, there's a couple different things you could do. You can either strain the fruit out, put it in these glass bottles, or you can leave it in there. It's just a matter of aesthetics at that point, whatever you prefer. I don't mind having some of the fruit in there, but when I make it for people and give it to them, I strain it first, put it in these uh, glass bottles, and seal it tight, make sure it's carbonated, and give it to them, tell them to refrigerate it. Now remember, this not only tastes great, it's a super gut healer. And in Ayurvedic medicine, for example, they say your gut is 90% of your health, both physically and mentally. So it's something that is really going to be cleansing and detox for you. So for that reason, if you're just starting out with this and uh, you're, you haven't done anything else health-wise, what you might want to do is try a cup of kombucha first, see how that goes over with you, because you might be on a toilet for a lot of the time because it's super detox. It's also great uh, probiotics and enzymes and so many other things. I've heard different numbers, but I think it's about 50% of the American population right now has leaky gut syndrome. So if you've ever drink an alcohol on an empty stomach or eat a lot of sugar, if you have symptoms like really bad PMS, if you're getting headaches, if you have joint pain, food sensitivities, or gas, there's a good chance you have it. And it's one of those things where if you don't treat it, it only gets worse. This is one of the things that's going to help with that, a good diet, it's gonna be something more like you wanna get on, but these are one of the things that help. Gluten is also a big cause of those things in, a difference in addition to sugar and alcohol. So after you fill up your bottles, just close them up and seal them up tight, let them sit outside of the fridge for a couple of days, and you'll see how much carbonation builds in there. This is the same like the first ferment. The longer you leave it out, the more acidic, the more vinegary, the more carbonated it's going to get. So it's a matter of finding the balance of your taste. You can put these in any type of bottle that you like. I've even seen some wine bottles that you can reseal the wine and it makes an airtight seal. You can put it in old kombucha bottles as well, or the Grolsch beer bottles. Now, you don't want to shake these because it would be having the same effect as shaking a, uh, a, a can of soda and you could explode it. So you want to be careful with those and you have the choice to either strain out the fruit or drink it with it. 
and it tastes better refrigerated. You want to work yourself up to about two or three cups a day and uh, you might have some healing crisis. So like I said, start small, maybe half a cup or a cup to begin with. As far as the old one, we're all set. All we need to do is cover that up and let it sit for 10 days and start the whole process all over again. It's the same with this. The longer you leave it, the more acidic, the more vinegary it's going to taste. The shorter you leave it, the more sweet it's going to taste. So that's up to you. But the longer you leave it, the more enzymes and the more, the more good bacteria is in there. Now coming up in part three, I show you my favorite way to flavor this, which is with teas, herbs, and essential oils, which I found to be the healthiest because it's lowest in sugar and alcohol. So check that out next.